YouTube. Hey, how are you today? Mm. Let's get juiced up on coffee and make some hot sauce. Ugh. Maybe I shouldn't have left these peppers out there to uh, sit in the bucket for two days. But I got some good ones and some bad ones here. I got to sort out and uh, then we're going to get down and making some washing them and making some hot sauce. Uh, I picked these before the, the cold front come in. There's habaneros, jalapenos, red jalapenos. There's some scorpion peppers in here. And... Uh, and some sweet, sweet banana peppers too. So there's quite a quite a few uh, different varieties that's gonna go into this hot sauce. It's gonna be a blazing hot, <laughs> blazing hot. It, it ain't, it's gonna be atomic hot. So stand by and uh, let's just get with it. Uh, I guess I need to pick these off, and I'm gonna separate the good from the bad. There's a bad. One. God, they smell good. Wish you could be here to smell this. Wish we could have some music, but with all the copyright infringements and everything today, uh, I don't want anybody uh, infringing on my copyrights, so uh, I'm going to stay away from other people. So right now I could jam to some good good music, but uh, we're not going to. We're going to pick out peppers. A lot of them here. But uh, <laughs> I guess I'll sit here and talk to you while I'm doing this. That's why I'm, I'm doing this. Ooh. Now, that right there is an habanero. Mm, that's a green scorpion pepper right there. That's So, won't you leave me some uh, comments on the, down below and uh, go join up for my my giveaway that I'm having. That ain't that cute. That almost looks like a scorpion pepper. But it's not. There's a scorpion. These have leaves on them, everything else. Next time, oh, I thought I knew better than this. I should have washed them straight out of the deal. I have a wash uh, area out there that I could put them in the screen and blow all this off. But I was in the middle of trying to get the yard cleaned up before the first frost and everything. I guess you probably understand all that. But, uh, I'm going to take all these back here to the bath <laughs> and uh, wash them. Either that or I'll put them. I got a big uh, bucket. Ooh, there's a nice scorpion pepper right there. Look how pretty that is. Let me go over here and show you how pretty that is. It's got three different colors in it. It's just... Look at there. Ain't that something? So, I had two buckets, two five-gallon buckets full of peppers when I got through picking them. Most of them were habanero. Uh, there's quite a few scorpion peppers. There's a bunch of scorpion peppers out there still. Uh, still on the, on the plant. I think I'm going to save them for seed. Because the simple fact that there may not be no seed next year, what everybody keeps saying. Personally, if there's not any seed, we're not going to eat.
so need to keep that seed going. I like heirloom seeds myself. Because they're free. Uh, I do have some varieties of seed to sell, but not even pepper seed uh, right now. I got some okra seed to sell. I got some crimson uh, some crimson spinous and I got some burgundy okra seed to sell. Uh, but uh, otherwise, I, I don't have a whole lot of seed to sell. Uh, I did pick a bunch of red Texas star seed yesterday while I was uh, getting the uh I'm just cutting the bad spots out of these some of them I guess I'll push over here I can access it better I spent a few months as a prep cook at uh, the wing house in Daytona Beach Florida and uh I learned a little bit about prep work and uh, some of it is just really is just kind of like setting up a, an assembly line. Most nights there at the wing house, I'd skin about a thousand, uh, at least a thousand chicken wings every night because that was the big hot thing going was naked hot wings and uh I'm telling you they kind of laughed at my the way I handled my knife when I first started because I had never worked in a professional kitchen before but whenever I <laughs> whenever I sat down and showed him that I knew what I was doing with my knife he left me alone and uh he said it was kind of like skinning a fish. Well, let me tell you something. If that fella skinned fish as much as I did, he would know that skinning a chicken leg ain't nothing, or a chicken wing ain't nothing like skinning a fish. There's a scorpion purple hair. That's the reason I'm wearing these gloves. It ain't because of these jalapenos. But, uh, yeah, I would skin up with a thousand, two thousand chicken chicken wings every night, and uh, it got monotonous. But I would skin those, bag them, clean them up, and bag them, and get them ready for the fry line for the next day. And uh, it's amazing how many chicken wings you sell at a, at a popular restaurant. That place was always packed. Always packed. I loved the wing house. That was in 2004. I loved working there. I did. For one thing, I didn't have no TV at home. I was a starving student. And so I didn't have no TV at home. So I got to watch all the fights, all the races. I didn't get to just sit down and watch them. But, uh, you know, they were on the television. And when the fight was happening, <laughs> your food really wasn't getting cooked. It was on the grill and it was getting cooked. But uh, <laughs> luckily we never burned anything. Get chicken wings. So if anybody else ever worked at the wing house and they see see this video, hey uh leave a comment down below and let us know when you worked there and uh girls or boys. It don't matter. I work with some some fun people and uh we had a good time.
I could remember any names or anything like that. It's been so long ago. And uh, I never did get in the habit of really socializing with them because I had too much going on. I went to school eight hours a day, or eight hours, yeah, eight hours a day. I went to school during the daytime, and then at night I went to work like at six, and I worked from six to closing, which was two a.m. And because uh, they had a liquor license. And uh, we would clean up and close at 2 a.m. and try to get out of there and doing the studying that I did because I tried to make the best grades I possibly could. And, uh, ooh, there's a big old scorpion purple there. How many is that so far? Bunch, uh, a few, huh? It ain't a bunch, but there's some more down in here. Yeah, many these peppers were so close to being overripe that uh, I almost didn't catch them in time. But I do have, I think I got two and a half or three gallons of peppers out in the freezer that I'm going to add to this and get them all out of the freezer. And uh, they're uh, mainly, I think I got some banana peppers and some habaneros or scorpion peppers. They did good this year, but they were slow. It's just now starting to produce. Uh, they, my greenhouse didn't work out as well as what I wanted it to last year. But uh, nothing did. But I'm not going to attribute it to my relationship with Linda because she she uh, supports me in every way she can about my garden. She don't much care for gardening as much as I do. But uh, she does really good. She's, she's not a gardener. So folks at home, if, if you have kids, that you don't force them to do stuff. Because they'll end up hating it. And it's something that's really fun to begin with. But if you don't do something just, just right, and somebody tears you a, a new one about it, it, it ain't no fun. These peppers, whenever I get through here, I'm gonna run them through the blender on a chop cycle and uh, chop them all up, put them in a bucket. Where, uh, I got some permitting buckets just like this right here. In fact, these are, this is one of them. We're gonna fill them back up and uh, put them in the, the master shower in there that we don't ever use. And uh, put depends. I, I, if I if I get a full bucket, I'll put four large onions in there, and uh, four large heads of garlic. There will be. Uh, black peppercorns in there and uh, let's see what else I'll put in there oh I don't put no apple cider vinegar in it I don't put anything in it right now when you ferment you don't want anything like it it's nothing but your ingredients and your beginning ingredients and your, your spices you don't want anything that'll that'll hamper your, your fermenting process. And vinegar will definitely hamper that because vinegar is a, 
get some preservatives. You don't want to put any preservatives in there because you won't get to. You're actually, I mean, whenever you say fermented, you're actually rotting the fruit. Uh, it's like making wine. It's not a tedious process. It's not even hard. Uh, just need to take a little pride in it. Put it together. If you can make something that tastes good, it, it's a lot to be proud of. People come over here. I don't serve them no hot sauce from the store or nothing like that. Linda might eat some hot sauce from the store, but I don't. All my picante sauce that I eat, all my hot sauce that I put on my food, it all comes right here out of this kitchen. And I'm kind of proud of that. It makes sense. Why you want to go pay the store what you can make at home? You know? Yes, I, I sell some of this. Uh, I sell bottles of it to my friends. If you want a bottle of it, let me know. Uh, it's kind of pricey. But, uh, well worth it. This is some good stuff. I enjoy it. It don't take much either. A bottle of it will last a long time. You know, I've had kids come over here. Some of my friends' kids come over here. They want to eat some of these peppers. And I'm like, man, I don't know about all that. These are hot. Little girl was over, I think she's about eight or ten years old. 12 years old, something like that. She ate one of these habaneros the other day. She went to drinking milk. I can't afford that. <laughs> Milk's too expensive. It's hot. So I'm gonna carry out. Ooh, my face is starting to burn. I had touched it. But it is definitely starting to burn. This this the aroma. This is a pretty strong aroma. So there may be more than 30 minutes of content here. If there is, I have to split it up into two, two videos, which is okay. I'll make the first video right here of me talking and whenever it runs out, the next video you'll see is me cleaning them up and chopping them and putting them in the, in the bucket. I do have to go, to the, go to, the, to the shed out there and get some garlic and some onions out of there to uh, to put in there but I'm curious to see how much uh, hot sauce I'm gonna get going here I got one bucket in the in a shower room uh, fermenting now it's been fermenting since October about the first part of October I'm not gonna pull it out until December and bottle it uh, it's almost a full five gallon bucket after I get them uh, strained and everything. I'm interested to see how much uh, I actually have to bottle. Uh, I'm gonna bottle them in, uh, I think, the five ounce bottles. Yeah, I get them off of Amazon. I buy the bottles off of Amazon. They come with them. the bottles come with shrink tops and, and all that good stuff. So it's a uh, uh, it's a professional looking looking bottle. It looks like it come from a factory. And, uh, that's one thing I really wish I had was a, a small canning factory out there where I could make pickles and, and stuff. 
I make some of the best pickles you ever eat. If you won't believe me, ask my friend Molly. Every time she comes in from from the Navy, she comes over here and gets her a jar or two. And she loves them. And no, I don't charge her nothing for them. She's in the military. But somebody else, you know, one of her friends or something like that, yeah, I charge them for them. Linda should be getting on soon. We're going to do sweet potatoes this afternoon. So if y'all want to come back and enjoy, we're going, to, we're going to can some sweet potatoes that I grew out in the garden. So. Some of that stuff splashed me on the face. Just saying, that's the reason it's really important to be using a sharp knife. And this knife is ooh, on the dull side. This is Linda's knife. Ooh, little scorpion. It's a green one. How many is that? A few. That's one thing about letting them sit like this. They're juicy as all get out. And, uh, I should have brought them straight in and washed them. Cleaned them and washed them. Chopped them and put them in the bucket that afternoon. But it was Sunday, I believe. I felt ashamed for even picking them. You're not supposed to work on the Sabbath. And according to the Roman Empire, the Sabbath is on Sunday for the Roman Catholic Church. I've been trying to convince our preacher, Brother Lonnie, that the actual Sabbath is on Saturday. I guess the only way I'm going to be able to celebrate, I can celebrate the Sabbath on Saturday, but won't nobody else be. So I had to go uh, celebrate the Sabbath on Saturday and go to church on Sunday to see my church. I really enjoy the church. You can see it live streaming on Facebook Live Watch. Calvary Temple of God in Groveton, Texas. You can come by there and watch every Sunday. It's always a good inter, inter, interesting entertaining sermon. And our church does a lot of good for the community and the outreach. The boys home. All that good stuff. So go by there and watch it. Send Brother Lonnie a like and a thank you because he does a lot for this community. He really does. There's a lot of folks in this community who probably wouldn't eat if it wasn't for him. He tries his best to help me along. He brought me a weed eater to work on the other day. I got it here. He said it was squirt gas out of the carburetor. Now, Brother Lonnie, I'm telling on you here now. This is how bad he wanted to send some work by the way. Somehow or another, he had pulled the gas line off of the carburetor. 
and it would every time you push the bubble, it would spark gas out of the out of the gas line. And I know what he thought. The minute he seen it, he's like, "Well, Chris will fix it." <laughs> yeah, I sure will. But uh, I don't work on a lot of uh, weed eaters. I guess I'm gonna have to start working on more. But uh, so if you want weed eaters to be worked on, this let me know, and I can give you a place where you can drop them off. Uh, I'm gonna make contacts all over East Texas with places where you can drop them off, sign them in, register them, and I will stop and pick them up on a weekly basis and bring them home and fix them and deliver them back to where you dropped them off and then you can pick it up and pay them there and they will uh, give me my money and they will keep a few dollars for themselves for their trouble. So uh, something like that. Uh, comes up. Yeah, I mean, I don't make service calls on, on little stuff, little bitty stuff. But I'll be more than happy to hook you up. All right.